Um, so hi, I'm Helen Schaefer. Um, this is my dog, Capel. He's uh, five, and we do grooming competitions together. So I'm going to show you how I put him into what's called a modern trim. Um, a modern trim is like a fancy lamb trim. So it's still a shorter, tighter body with a fuller leg, just not this full. So first things first, I'm going to set in his top line. I'm going to use a lot of clipper combs to um, take off the bulk of this hair. A lot of it is, um, you know, just too much. And it's taking away from his neck back here. So I have a one guard on my clipper. And I'm going to go in reverse because I can drag the clipper over the flat part here in between his hip bones and then skim forward. I like to leave about five fingers behind his withers, which is the top of his shoulder here. That's so that I can help bring in his neck to his top line and give him a better flow. So I'm going to put my hand there because that hair is sacred. I'm coming forward. And once I reach the spot where it's not flat on the muscle anymore, I just skim lightly forward. At this point in time, I'm not going down into the sides. I want to do that with my clipper. I meant with my scissors, not my clipper. Take off a good bulk of hair there. This blade in reverse is nice because it leaves me enough hair to do something with, but not so much that I'm going to get lost in the scissoring. The same blade, I'm going to set in the back of my leg. I'm going to go from where the knee bends straight up right underneath the pin bone, which is the bone back here. I have my finger on it in a C shape. And that's going to set the very, very back of my dog. Go all the way around. And then I'm just going to take it and with the grain of the hair, I'm going to just lightly skim on the side where I've made that. And that's how I'm going to set in my angle later with the scissors. So then I'm going to come around to the front. And poodles have a, a, a chest. They have the point of their chest, which is the longest point of their, the furthest forward that they go, is equal to their pin bone back here. So if I drew a line from his pin bone forward, that's where the um, furthest out his chest should be. He has a lot of hair there. So what I'm going to do is I've made this little indentation. I know where it is. And I am going to skim off all the excess hair. I'm going to start here, coming forward towards that. Little notch I made. And then underneath, into my front leg. But not going down, just in. Kind of like a scoop. And then I'm going to take it straight on his belly here and take off this hair that I don't need because their chest should be in line with their elbow and his elbow is right there. Okay. Take his leg forward and I'm just going to scoop out right where that is. And that's setting in my front angle. So it's putting his leg underneath of him. Now obviously he has a lot of leg hair too. So same thing with this chest. Now he'll have a tighter body and a longer leg, but I don't need any of this outside hair. So I'm going to take the same one guard. I'm going to come to the flat part of his shoulder here. And I'm just going to lightly skim down. I'm not digging in. I'm not, my blades is barely even touching his actual body but I'm just taking off some of this bulk of the hair. You can already see how much longer his neck looks. And I'm following that back, just skimming lightly. I don't want to come into here because that's my rib cage. Same thing back here from where I made this. I'm just going to skim lightly down. I'm not touching the actual leg. I'm just taking anything that's hanging outside of this line that I made off with my clipper. When you're in the ring,
speed matters because I only have uh, two hours to do this dog. So if I came in with all this hair, I could be in a lot of trouble if I didn't bulk some of it off. Once I have that done, I'm going to switch to scissors. And again, we're going for speed right now because we're trying to get a shape on him and he doesn't have one. So I'm just going to go over where I clipped, taking a little bit more here. And I'm turning my scissors this way because I'm just setting in my top line. Making sure everything here looks kind of good. Now in the ring, I would have had to have done his clean face. You can see it's pretty clean and his, his feet are not the cleanest, but they were recently done um, as well as his tail band. So those are things that you would do in the ring, but for today, we're, we're not going to worry too much about that. All right. So back to my rear angle. Um, the next most important part of a poodle is that they are square. And what square means is that they are this long as they are tall. So if he was shorter on leg, I would have to, which means that he has, you know, he was shorter than he is long, I'd have to correct that. He's pretty square himself. He's just a big boy. Um, so we're going to just tighten this up and give him a little bit more elegance and a little less Hulk man. So where I've done this clipper work back here, I'm taking my straights and I'm going straight across the pin bone. And that's this bone right here. That is the longest point on my poodle. I am following that pin bone and I'm aiming for the hip bone. This is the rear angle. This is part of, there's 45 degrees from the withers to the point of chest to the elbow in the front. And then it's 45 degrees back here from the hip to the pin to the knee. The angles match and that's what gives you balance. So balance is that the front and the back of the dog match. Symmetry is that sides to side match. So I'm just going to follow that angle with my scissors, aiming my tips towards that hip bone, and I'm going to come straight out. So I am over top of my pin bone, and I am coming straight out. And I'm coming straight out because poodles are um, a working dog and they do have a good thigh muscle, and so I don't want to come down and pinch this off, because if I pinch this off, it's not going to look great. He's not going to have any substance there. Okay. So checking from the side here. I can see my tail needs a little bit more cleaning up. I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to lay it right next to the tail there and just snip that off. If your tail needs to come up higher because it's sitting a little low towards this pin bone, you can shave a triangle over top and it'll visually move the tail forward. And that's a little bit of corrective grooming. So you would just take the same blade that you use on your tail band and you would just follow it up so that it looked like the tail started where it should. The tail band should only go to the bottom of the anus and that is just to clear off from this angle so that you can see where the tail sits. Turn you back. There we go. I'm just going to clean this up a little bit more. Okay. We're going to leave that for now and we're going to go back to the front and we're going to clear up this angle. And I'm doing this so I can see what kind of shape I need to leave, what kind of substance. The shave line on the front of the poodle is from the outside ear corner towards the point of the chest. It's where the, um, on some dogs, like, like my mini here, are eunuched. And what eunuched means is that the muscle is backwards genetically, so he has an extended range of motion. Um, but his neck turns under right here, and if I expose that, it's really ugly. So I want to make sure that I don't do that. 
Um, if you're ever unsure of where to end your clipper line on a poodle, if you take your hand back here and your hand in the front and you make kind of a loose chokehold and you slide it down to where your hands have to stop, that's where your shave line goes. And that, that'll be for every single dog. That is physically where it should go because that's physically where their neck ends, where it meets the shoulders. So it's a nice, easy reference. The width depends on the dog. Um, like I said, he's a little bit beefy, so I, want, I keep it a little bit wider than I do on my toy. But that, that is all uh, to the dog. So once you have this shave line, you follow it with your scissors out towards the shoulder. You want it very tight here. Um, the tighter that you can coming out and beveling it around, the longer your neck's going to look. You don't want them to look like they're scrunched up. You want them to look long and elegant. I know, buddy. Got his hand. Okay. I'm looking at my pin bone, my point of chest. I'm making my indent again so I know. And I'm scissoring right down to that point of chest and then out. So I'm up and down right here. That's how long my chest is. And then I'm going towards the shoulder, but I'm not cutting again into the shoulder. We're going to come back and do that on its own accord. So once I have that as tight as I want it to give him that nice square appearance, I'm going to follow my clipper line again underneath and into the front leg. And I'm doing the same thing. I'm not cutting into my shoulders. I'm just cutting across. Um, for pets, it doesn't matter so much, but if you do want them to look their best, the way that you apply this, um, which is something that I, that I show in one of the classes I do, it, is to take these angles and like move them on a pet dog as well. But for like a competition dog, this is imperative because if we come around, we're going to cut everything off that we need to form these really elegant long lines. So I am just scissoring on one plane. Grooming a competition dog or any dog really is like sculpting. It's not painting. So you can't cut the whole dog from just standing here because you can't see what you're doing. Um, so now that I've gotten this in and you can see already this nice shape of the chest. And it's not a lot of hair there. I'll probably take a little bit more off actually. We're going to come around to the side. This front angle that I've created where I've cut across, you can see this line. I'm going to wrap it around my shoulder. And as I do that, this grimace is going to turn into a slight smile. And that's really important. So when you're looking at the front of the dog, if I pull this up and in, you'll see that this is the shoulder muscle. And that's what we're expressing there and that's why we don't cut into the side here because if I cut off all that shoulder it's going to stay a grimace. Okay. So following that around from the side and I have his ears wrapped in vet wrap very loosely. I only do that for competition um, purposes because that way they're out of my way. So from this side I can see where I put my indent and I'm going to follow that around. I'm still using my straights and I'm angling towards that point of chest. But I'm going backwards towards my elbow because I'm setting in that triangle in the front, that 45 degree angle. And I'm just following that invisible triangle from the withers to the point of chest to the elbow. That's what I'm pulling down and in. And this area is kind of flat. Um, it's not completely flat. It will eventually look like an hourglass. So it'll come kind of out, in, and then out a little bit. Now I have a corner here. And when I take off my corners, I don't want them to be very harsh, so I will switch to blenders or chunkers. And I'm just going to 
take that edge off. Always comb up. Um, a lot of people, if you've been in a competition ring, will see the judges go like this. They're doing that to check your scissor work. You don't want to do that when you're doing your scissor work because every time you do this, you're making a break in the coat. If you comb straight up, the hair will naturally fall back down because of gravity, and then you won't have to worry about fluffing it in such a manner but it'll all come up and you'll be able to see what you're missing. So I'm just cleaning up this front angle again. Good boy. Be very cognizant. I want to check my work from the front, make sure that I'm getting a smile here. I am. Poodles um, have a forward carriage and what a forward carriage means is that their head so from the back of the bell of the ear is carried in front of themselves. Um, so that's how we know where to set our back, the front of our front leg is a straight line from the back bell of the ear down. So if I comb all this up, I'll know what I need to take off in a minute. And we're just going to tighten this up just a little bit because he still looks kind of long. This is how you make them not long. You build the angulation in the front by taking away. A lot of, a lot of um, people here build the angulation and they leave a lot of hair up here, but they, they shouldn't. They should be very, very tight. This is a one inch comb, so at his longest, he's only a half inch there, and that's still too long. So you can see. So I'm just following from that point of chest. You don't want them to look like they're falling forward. You want them to look proud and elegant like a puffed out chest, but not that they're going to fall over. Okay. And this angle here is where his leg hits. So you can pull the leg straight out, put it back, scissor it in. Also at, from this position is a great way to check your elbows later, which we'll do when we scissor in our leg. Anything that would be sticking out of that line once we scissor in our leg will um, we'll blend off. So I'm pretty happy with that front angle so far. There's a little bit here that I want to get, so I'm angling up and away, and I'm going to pivot around in a windshield wiper motion. Because I don't want to take off my point of chest, this is still my longest part, equal with the pin bone. But I want to take this up a little bit so that he doesn't look like he's leaning forward. You can see how much longer his neck looks already from then where we started. So going back to this back angle, because I'm, I'm working front to back on him to square him up. So I have this, I'm pretty happy with it. I am going to blend a little bit more of this off, just to clean up that tail some more. And then I'm going to, again, with the windshield wiper motion, come up and into my back thigh. And I'm coming in from the side and forward and that's going to create that angle in the back because you want to be able to see all the curves of the dog no matter where you're standing. So whether you're standing in to the profile view or if you're standing behind and looking forward, I want to see that this is my, where my chest comes back into the body, where it returns. Okay. So I'm just following this all the way around. And then I'm going to end up with a ledge here, too. And the same thing. I want, poodles have like a rounded hip, but you don't want to cut it in. So what that means is I don't want to take any depth off of here, necessarily, but I do want to round it off. So I'm going to take this edge off, just angling it around, 
I'm not taking anything off the top or the side, just what's sticking out of my lines that I made. Standing him up, taking a look. It's always nice to step back and look to see what you're doing, making sure that you're happy with it. It's looking pretty good. It's probably still a little too furry back here. So I'm just going to shorten them up. If, he, if they look long, if anything's catching your eye, that's what you need to fix. And again, you create angula angulation by taking away, not by leaving, unless the dog is very, very, very incorrect. Right? That looks pretty good. Come on, buddy. You're a good boy. He likes to be a little lazy. Now we're going to make them bring our angles together into the middle here and we're going to do the rib and then, then we move on to the, the tuck up in the legs. The rib cage on a poodle is rounded and deep. They're not barrel chested, they're not um, slab sided like a bedlington and what slab sided means is that you take away all the bulk here so that the dog turns under. Um, more than it should. If you think about this right here, it's long and kind of round. So you want it to go all the way down to, um, so that it shows that they have enough for the lung capacity because they are water dogs. They would be doing a lot of swimming. Um, but you don't want it so tight in that they lose all the substance. So I have my curves, and with my curves, I'm going to go from this side here. I am following this that I've made. This is where I want my rib cage. It's behind my shoulder, behind my elbow, and in front of my loin. I am fluffing it up. I'm going to take my curves, and I'm angling from underneath where I took my underline tighter and out with the tips towards, and towards the ceiling and away. And I'm just following that line. And I'm not really moving my hand as much as I'm rotating the scissors. If I have to go deeper underneath to get this tighter, I either move my hand so it's flat, tips are still out, not angled in or up. Okay, buddy. And then I'm going to follow that line that I made here on the top line. I do it from the front here so I can hold his little nose. I am, if I'm doing it this way, I'm going to angle into my top line but not dip down. So I don't want to take any more hair off of my top line. But if I am doing it the way that I'm going to do it right now, I am going to lean my pivot point of my scissors along the top line and I'm going to angle my curves towards the widest part of the rib, which is right down the middle here. I am kind of taking off the line that we made on the top line already, but I'm more just trying to shape my ribs. And this is not a great angle to be doing it because you can see that my wrist is broken um, and that means that it's not straight. A straight wrist is very essential to good scissoring um, in the long run. You have better control of your scissors and it's obviously more ergonomic and safer for your, for your um, ulnar and carpal tunnels. But, oh, don't want to stare at my back, so. Um, once I get that, my top line to the widest part, I'm going to go just over the widest part. 
I don't want my rib cage to be out here, just like I don't want my chest to be out here. It would look weird, like they had a tumor on their side. When the, dog, when the poodle walks, when any dog walks, you don't want anything to be flying out, unless it's a long skirted coated breed, and, but that's more forward and back. Even the side to side is a lot of extra fringe that you don't need. So I'm just taking off and giving a little bit of shape to this ribs. Checking from the front. I'm looking down my dog. So I can see all right, I have a shoulder here, I have a rib here. I can see the indentation where I'm going to leave my loin. And then I can see my back angle right here. He's probably still too furry overall, but he has a shape. So next I'm going to take a little bit more off of my elbow because it's blending into my rib cage here. And how I'm going to do that is with the curves still. I'm going to flip them around so that my thumb is in the ring finger and the um, pivot point is against the dog. The pivot point I am angling at the elbow and I'm going to do that windshield wiper motion again. And this is just going to complete that smile and take the little edge off there and that's going to bring my leg in eventually underneath of him and it's going to bring it behind the ribs because the ribs should be wider than the front leg and right now they're not because he has so much hair here. So then when again when I look down the side here you can see the shoulder, rib, we're looking good. So now that we've gotten this shape in, I'm just going to refine it a little bit. And you can do this with your curves or with thinners or blenders, chunkers, whatever you prefer. I'm not going into the loin yet. The tuck up on a poodle is very rounded and it belongs where the last rib is except some dogs have an extra rib and some dogs are missing a rib unless you have the x-rays, you don't know that. So I like to bring my knee up, my physical knee, not all this extra hair, and see where it hits the dog. And this will put it, my tuck up, where it needs to be on that particular dog. So I've made this line here, that's where my tuck up is. I'm gonna comb everything forward with my curves. I'm going straight in and I'm just making a notch. And then I'm going to curve that notch, tips forward, and my tips are forward and angled slightly in. Not all the way in because you don't want to catch any skin down here, but just enough to clear it. And then I'm going to go this way, same motion. And I'm just doing like a little round C right here. And that's setting in my tuck up. And again, this is for a competition dog. You want the tuck up to be one third, two thirds. That's how the dog is split up. And now that I know where that is, follow it around. Once I set it underneath there, I'm going to go ahead and flip my curves again, just like we did with the elbow. I'm going to put my pivot point where the tuck up is. And starting right behind that rib, I'm going to windshield wiper into my rear leg. And I'm going to follow that up a little bit. And this is one of the distinctions between a Bichon and a Poodle. Is a Poodle, you can see the tuck up from when you're looking over top of the dog. If you're doing a Bichon, you would not bring it up this far because you should not see that. If you're looking at a Bichon, it should be rounded from all sides with no breaks. But on a Poodle, they want to see a waist, and this is how we make their waist. This tuck up area is also where if you're doing like a bandit trim, you would want to start your band. You want to place your band there. That's the correct spot. 
because it is just to visually break the front of the dog from the back of the dog. Can you turn that way, please? Okay, so then we're going to start setting in our legs. You're a good, good boy. I'm just going to do this to keep his head forward while we do this. I'm going back to my straights, and I'm going back to my straights because if I do this with curves, I tend to make my legs um, too small. I'll start with my back leg since we're here, and we've just done our tuck up. So the back of the tuck up is the front of the back leg. If you comb everything forward, and that includes from the inside, especially right in here with this little fluffy area, and then up. You can turn your head, buddy. Good boy. Hip and the knee are in line. If you take your back foot straight up, but not crunched, just straight up like they're about to take a step, and your straights, straight line to your tuck up. And then you can windshield wiper. All this little excess hair right there. Make sure that line's nice and clear. That's your upper thigh. So you can see we completed our tuck up. We might have to go over it a little bit with blenders. But now we have the front of our back thigh. So this and this are parallel lines. So then to do the bottom part of the front of our back leg, we are again making sure our hip and our knee are in alignment and we're just taking it slightly up while it's in that back kicked position. And then this is a straight line across. And what this is going to do, it's going to leave you a little triangle and that's right where your knee is. And we are not going to touch that triangle until the very, very end. So you have a straight line here, our triangle, a straight line here. Now that we've established those lines, we're going to do our cuff. And I like to do the cuff with the five and one um, on a 40 setting. I like to set it in that way. I comb everything down to the foot and I take my hand and I make a little circle with my index finger and my thumb right to the end. On the back leg, I then go straight in on the side, straight in on the back. He's got a lot of hair. Straight in on the other side. Clean that up a little bit back there. And then straight on the front. And I'm just dipping in and taking out. I'm not turning the blade. Turning the blade's gonna cause an angle that you may not want. We can clean these up afterwards. This is just to get the bulk of the hair. And you want to do all these parts before you scissor the leg because if you scissor the whole leg and then pick it up and crush it, you've ruined all the work you are doing. No lazy boy, you got to stand up. Okay. So then I have this nice, cu nice cuff line here. Very clean. If it needed to be cleaned up at all, you just comb it down, take your curves and take off any of the straights. You definitely need to do your clean feet again, but that's all right. All right. So, turn that way, baby. He's very nosy, he likes to see what I'm doing. 
So we have our front of the thigh, where now we have like a little hair that popped out. That's totally normal. So I'm just going to snip that off it's out of my line. So I have my front of my thigh, the front of my lower thigh, which is the technical term for it, and then my little knee triangle here. We have our cuff. So now we're going to go ahead and scissor in our legs. And he's getting a little staticky. So if you have static while you're scissoring, which is not uncommon, you just want to make sure that um, you have like a little bit of a moisturizing spray or some distilled water that you can just mist onto the coat. I like to spray it up into the air and let it settle on the hair versus spraying directly into the hair. Still with my straights, I am combing all of this up. I'm going to give him a little shake so it lays where it wants. And then I'm going to follow this line that I've created with my thigh to, my, to the bottom of my cuff. I'm going to blend this in. My straights are up and down. They're not dipping in. They're not dipping out. They are following this line. I am not straight up and down or this way, but I am slightly angled. And again, not dipped or in or out. And then I'm just going to follow the natural curve of the leg. I'm not going to come to the front of the knee because I'll cut it off. I'm just doing the side that I can see. And this is how you set your parallel line. You could do this with blenders or chunkers if you're more comfortable, if you feel like you're still developing your scissor skills. Um, chunkers are great because they are straights that are softer. But if you have good scissor skills, a straight blade is going to make such a difference in your time and your speed. Serrated edges are nice too. Um, these are not serrated, but they're great if you have a, a dog with a little bit of a softer coat. My other poodle has a very soft coat, so I use serrated blades on him. Stand back, look at my handiwork. Okay, there's still some stuff to come off the front, but I'm not scissoring that right now because I'm going to go ahead and set in my back hock. So I haven't done anything with this hair down here because poodles need hock hair. They always need hock hair. It's always breaking. And Capel is no exception because he believes he is a wild animal and spends most of his day in the yard by choice. Uh, he's very hard to get inside, especially when the weather's nice. So he's always in the mud and the snow. He loves snow. Always damaging hair. So I try to like not take too much off back here. Because all of this will eventually come to that point of hock. And the point of hock is the top of the hock. It's also if you go like this. So if you take both of your, your make a little V, and you go like that, that's the point of your hock. Once you get there with this V, you can pinch that hair behind and then come down so that it's even almost with your clip line. And right there, you're going to just take your straights and you're going to go right to that back pad, right to where you shaved. And that's going to set in a nice little angle. And this is where you get that drama. And then you just follow that around on the back, and then we'll blend it in on the sides. So the hawk's still going to be parallel when viewed from behind, but you get that nice little flare from the front. You can play around with that. Take my curves, and I'm just going to neaten that up a little bit. And this gives you a little bit more angulation. A little, little European flare. The same thing, um, it's a parallel line on the outside, it's a parallel line on the inside. So on the inside of the leg, let's turn him a little bit. Oh, oh you okay, buddy? I'll try to. Um, I just comb all of this hair out, straight out from the leg. 
And just like I had my scissors angled this way on the outside, I'm going to do the same on the inside, except that I'm going to come and I'm going to point towards the inside of the opposite leg or towards the elbow of the opposite leg. I'm cutting anything that's in my line of view. And again, I'm not doing the judging. I'm just pulling straight out. Taking everything off outside of that line. The outside of the front legs are tighter than the inside, and then the back legs are the opposite. The inside of the back legs are tight, and the outside is thicker. And it just goes from that muscle, that thigh, down. That's your line. Right. So now I'm going to take my blenders. And I'm going to go ahead and I can see I have some stuff hanging outside my lines again. Now that I've cut off some, some of that um, length. So I'm going to take my foot, just like I did before the first time, and I'm just going to clean this up without going into that knee again. And I'm going to do the same thing for the top thigh. Remember, so the bottom is I'm pulling it up but back. And for the top, it's just straight up and down. Thank you, breath, bro. And I'm just looking from behind and I'm going to take off any ledges that I see. We want parallel lines, really pretty. We want pretty. Pretty velvety scissor work. I like to step back, make sure I got everything. tough one because he does have this color gradient so a lot of times like his light silver just makes it look like it's a sharp line if you have a dog like that one of the tips that I, I use on him when I'm in the competition ring is I use a little blow pen like the creative girls do with black I just do a little bit of it before the competition you can do it inside the ring but you have to protect your table because you don't want somebody to come in afterwards and put a white dog on there that's not fair to them um, but just enough and I brush it through just like I would chalk you can do chalk um, BioGroom makes a spray called black magic that's more of a hairspray though so I find that that's sometimes a little bit too harsh especially if I have the scissors still otherwise I will lightly fluff up that line and with my blenders just take some of the ends off so that it's not such a stopping point, you know, so it's a little bit softened, just like that. You want to make sure, especially in competitions, that you're moving around your dog and that you're seeing all the things from a judge's perspective, because the judge is not going to just judge you from this side and this side. They're going to walk around your dog and you want to be able to see all that angles and scissor work and anything sticking out. All right, so that looks pretty good. I'm stepping back and then now I think we can take off this little bit of the knee. I'm going to fluff it straight up and I'm going to take my scissors and just lightly angle them this way because I don't want to cut any of this curve off. I just want to cut that ledge. So I'm just looking and I'm just cutting the ledge. I'm not cutting in front of the knee at all. I'm not cutting right here. I'm cutting the side. Then I'll come over here 
and I'll cut this ledge off. Or you could do this from behind. I find it easier to do it from this angle because I'm aiming for the inside of the leg and if I look this way, I don't accidentally come into the front. And then I'm just going to follow this. These are little sticky alleys that I can see below. And then if I still feel like there's too much sticky outy, I will go and I'll push it forward a little bit. And then I will take off just from the sides. And then you can just see, it's just that little edge right there. So it's just like a little bit of hair sticking out of that line. But that way you don't cut your knee off. Because if you cut your knee off, you lose all that pretty flow that you've got going on. So now we're going to go ahead and do the front leg. Same thing as the back, except that since I don't have a knee to set in and it's just a column, I'm going to start with my cup. So I'm going to comb everything down, same procedure, ring and thumb, making a, a circle, all the way to the shave line. And then again on the 40 setting, straight down and out all around. Like I said, we didn't do as clean feet today, so I'm just going to scoop a little bit around the toe there just so that you get a better look at what we've done. He's a good boy for clean feet. I just don't like doing them. I don't mind on competition day, but I feel like since we don't have to do them in the ring anymore. <laughs> All right, so we got our cuff. We've set our elbow, or shoulder, rather. So we have this line from here to the bottom of our cuff. And our cuff looks a little low still. So I'm just going to take my curves, and I'm going to clean this up. I have them laying flat against my foot, so that I'm not cutting that, my foot, I mean. And then I'm just going to cut a little box around. And then once I have that line, I can pick up my foot and just clean anything else up. And I can follow it behind, because that's really where we're going to want it clean. And a lot of this has to do with the fact that he has gobs and gobs of hair. And so it's just hanging on the ground. Right? So we got that cleaned up a little bit. Now I have this line here that I've made to here. And then as I talked about earlier, we know where the front of the leg is. It's equal with behind the bell of the ear. So if I draw this line down, I know all this hair has to come off. So I'm going to comb all this up again. And I'm going to set my column legs as a box first. I'm not going to, I'm going to start with the side, outside, inside, front, and then the back. If you take off too much hair from back here, you're going to make your dog look longer. So you want to do this last just like you do the knee last. Everything from the front leg and the back legs are opposite. All right, so I have my line. I can pick my leg up because I have my line and I'm not putting a finish on right this second. I'm just taking bulk hair off. So with my straights, I'm going to follow this visual line that I've made. And maybe I'll actually put his foot down because he's kind of leaning. Yeah, do you leaning. So I have this line here and I'm going straight down off of it. And remember, we already bulked off some of this hair. So he has a lot. And I'm not going all the way around because I can't see back here. I'm only cutting where I can see. And again, with scissoring, you want to keep your wrist as straight as possible. 
so I know that my wrist is breaking. Don't think that that's correct. That is just because I'm trying to stay out of your view. And then the same thing with the front leg. I'm following this angle that I created in the front. And I'm going straight across. I know I said I'd do side, side, and front, but um, <laughs> I'm a creature of habit now. So I, uh, because I am used to doing this, I just did what I normally do. Um, so then when I do the inside, I pick my leg up, I comb it out, straight out and away from the skin, give a little shake, and then I just pull the arm slightly out. This elbow does not have the range of motion ours does. It's just enough to let their chest fall when they lay down. Um, you do not want to yank your elbow and feel the dog fighting you. It's going to put the dog off balance and it's going to, it's mean. It's just mean. You wouldn't want your arm ripped behind your back and that's basically what it does to them. So I'm just angling it slightly out. Like he's going to get lay down for a nap. And then anything that's outside of my line, which is at the bottom of the cuff where I've made, and then also I can see up into the armpit. You don't need to take, <laughs> you're fine, hi, I love you. You don't need to take a lot off of the inside of the leg. You just need enough to allow light to be seen. Um, you know, unless the dog needs it because they're very narrow in the front and you, you need to like create the illusion of width. But you don't want the legs to be touching. That, that's the major thing. You don't want so much hair that they're just rubbing together and you can't tell the difference between the left leg and the right leg. And if your dog is extra wide in the front, like has a big, big stance, you want to leave more hair to tighten it up and then take the outside really tight. So we're just taking hair off of the inside along my line. Put it down. I'm going to. I'm just following my same line. I'm still using my straights. Coming everything up. Everything up. Can you put that foot down. Thank you. I'm picking the foot back up. Now that I've established a nice line, I just want to take off any sticky outies again. Like I said, he has a ton of hair, so I'm trying to make sure that I don't make him have matchstick legs, but he also doesn't need sequoias. lines around. I'm pick the leg up. And you can look across the front leg and see where you need to go with the lines that you've established. I'm just following that angle, cleaning it up. I've been taking more hair off. Pulling it out just slightly, making sure my cuff line's clean. Okay. Step back. Now we talked about earlier balance being side to side and then symmetry front to back. There is a symmetry here. You want this to be the same width as this. So we could see, you can kind of step back and be like, okay, all right. So this here, this here. And we can see that we have too much there. We have too much anyway because now this elbow is well into the rib cage. Um, 
the elbow should be in line where our transition is going to be, which is going to be right here. That's where we clip to, and that's the crest. But we want that symmetry, we want that balance. forward. I'm just going to follow this line around. I have a little bit of an edge here. I'm going to take that off. And I'm going to go straight down. And you just really want to be careful here because it's very easy to take off too much hair and make your dog look longer. So if you're not very confident, definitely stand to the side of your dog and look at what you're doing. I'm going to take my blenders, and I'm going to blend off this outside edge. Pulling this around, anything that's hanging out. And I'm moving my head so that I can see all the different Thing, lines that I've created. You know, they're columns, they're sculptures. So when you're moving around them, you're going to see if something's sticking out. And then how we talked about earlier with the elbow and checking it. I'm going to pull his leg forward again. This way I can see again, this is a different perspective because even though we're doing it for grooming contest and the dog's going to be standing still on the table, we have to think about what would happen in the confirmation ring. So pulling the leg forward and then back is how they would take a step. And if they were walking around the ring, what does that look like? So I'm pulling his leg forward. I can see that I have too much here because the elbow is sticking out beyond the shoulder. So I'm going to just take my blenders because I'm not really looking at where I'm going, I'm looking at what I'm seeing, if that makes sense. Um, you know, when we're talking about scissoring here, because I'm standing in front of this plane, I can see what I'm doing. If I'm standing here, and I just notice that this hair here is sticking out further from here than I want it to, I'm not necessarily standing where this hair is. So you just want to be very careful, and you definitely want to do that with a lighter, del more delicate, scissor, like a blender, like a, a, a high tooth blender. So I'm going to comb all this up again, give it a little shake, pull my leg forward again, checking side to side any of these lines that I see, anything that's sticking outside of the line that I already established. I'm not establishing any new thick parts of the leg here. I'm not taking any length off. I'm just taking the sticky outies. Then I'm going to put his leg back as if he's going to finish his step. Now here I can see that he is out at elbow and what that means is that if he was walking it would look like he was throwing his elbows out but this is just hair. So we can trim that off while his leg is up. So again, straight forward, bending at the ankle, pushing back through the joint in a natural motion. And then I am just taking off what I am seeing from this viewpoint of sticking out. And that brings his elbow in. Then I'm gonna finish the step. And when we finish the step, we take another look. shake and now I can see perfectly where I need to go. And this is the important thing is that we're looking to enhance the structure of our dogs for grooming competitions just like confirmation. We don't move the dogs, but if you are able to move the dog, especially if you're doing like a Barkley show um, with a Sally break, it's a great idea to step back and, and take a look at your dog. 
and see what's sticking out. Like, where do you see what's drawing your eye? You know, your eye shouldn't be drawn to anything in particular. It should just be focused on the dog as a whole. If you're noticing something out of place, that's what you need to go back inside and fix. And especially for poodles, you want to get around the dog at least once in that first hour before the sally break. All right, so that's from the front, you can see. And I'm going to come to the side. I'm going to take a step back and look. This is still too much. I can see this is too much because this is his elbow. And this is where I established that line when I checked to see if he was at a, out at elbow. So I'm just going to go straight down from that with my blenders. Because again, we don't want to take too much off back here, but we want to have a really coherent dog. You know, um, in Europe they do a lot of flare on the legs, which is really, really nice. Um, I know in America we consider our trims a little bit more boring, but you can add flare and, and snazz to your trims, but you, they shouldn't look like they're wearing bell bottoms. I'm a huge fan of bell bottoms, just not on a poodle. And again, I'm just using these to take off the edges, to take off anything that's hanging outside of that little line that I've made. And I'm moving around my dog as best I can to make sure that I'm seeing all of this. This looks a little thick right in here. If you step back, you could see it's not really round. It's kind of straightened down. Um, it goes straight down into the elbow to be even with the elbow. So I'm going to take my blenders and again, just like I did earlier, angling out and up, I'm going to angle that off. We did take that with a clipper earlier so that it was nice and tight. I'm going to put my hand on my leg just to make sure that I'm not taking any leg hair. There we go. That looks better. Step back again. Comb that out. And he still has a little bit of a bell bottom going on there. Pick up my other leg and I'm just going to go pull that in just a little bit. If I pick it up and shake, I can see it from this angle. Do not do this until you have like your leg really the length that you want it. And don't do this to take any length off because you will regret it. You will pinch that leg and there's no going back. Once the hair is gone, it's gone. And I do not recommend going into the ring with as much hair as this dog had at the beginning. This is just pure 2020 COVID laziness right here. He was getting piecemeal groomed. All right, so that looks pretty good. I could probably still take a little bit off of here, but I'm gonna have to whittle at this haircut over the next couple of weeks till I get it to where I want it. And now I know we're going to set my crest in right there. The transition to the crest I do kind of last. Uh, I set in my top knot first. Again, we didn't do a clean face or feet on him today. Um, I did them last week when I bathed him. But I, I'm gonna take this up just a little bit so it's a little bit of a crisper line. Poodles have a stop, especially um, the clippered heads. It's an inverted V. So it's not, some people I see read the V part and not the inverted. The hair doesn't come down into the nose. It goes up. They have a stop just like we do. It separates this lower part of the head from the t higher upper part of the head. So it's a nice little, I take one tooth of my five and one and I go right in there, either side. 
and then I follow my eye corner to my ear corner. And this just establishes the lines of his face. With them nice and clean. You want your flues nice and clean. Um, that's right in here. I do them with a 40. It keeps that um, discoloration down and it keeps their teeth healthier and their mouths overall. Um, especially poodles have tight mouths usually. So they're prone to a lot of tooth and gum disease. Um, he's actually due for another dental. But definitely um, oral health is super, super important to our dogs and it's going to guarantee you a much happier and longer life with them. Because, you know, this is my pet first. Huh. All right, so with my curves, I'm going to follow that clip line that I made. My ears are still wrapped so that they're out of my way. My um, scissors are against his face, but slightly out. I'm going to take one snip, go over his ear, make sure that you're over the ear and not in the ear, and then I'm going to follow that around. And that separates the ear from the scissor top knot. It's a line that you probably have to go over a couple of times. You can also pull the ear forward and follow it around with the scissors just kind of flat. And you don't need anything that's sticking outside of that line. So if you do do it this way, just windshield wiper back. And a little C. And that's going to set the curve of the neck. Remember how earlier I said that this was an hourglass shape? This is, this is how we get that hourglass shape. So you can see now that that's been established. Do it on this side. And the reason that we do this, um, this helps give structure to the top of the head. Um, he's a tall dog, but he has kind of a naturally short neck, so I want to give him the illusion of a longer neck. So I do leave a little bit more up here than the actual natural hair texture can support. So I have to build scaffolding by taking smaller layers that will support that longer hair in the middle. I'm going to go um, right in front of the eyes. Uh, when I do my clean face, I remove my eyelashes with my 40 blade. Well, I do a 30 on his face because he has a little bit of scarring from when he was a puppy. Um, but I, I take it right over the eye. They will close their eyes, and that just gives you a nicer, cleaner look there. So now that I've established my front line and my sides, I'm going to take all of my top knot to the side. I'm going to tilt his head slightly, and then I'm just going to scissor anything that's hanging outside that line that I've made. Making the lines and following them is called blocking. So if you ever see that word, if you're a newer groomer, um, we used to have things called blocking blades. Um, I'm not entirely sure what length they were, but they existed. Uh, but blocking in your dog is just giving you a visual guide to how you want it to look. And when you're doing this from the sides, you don't want to come into here because if you take too much hair there, you're going to pinch it off and he's going to look like Toad um, from Mario Brothers. Like it's just going to be like a mushroom cap and that's not a pretty look. If you create an unnatural break in the neck, it's going to show how short the neck is. that over one more time. Again, just following that line that I established. These are my curves. Um, making sure that his head is forward. Poodles carry their nose parallel to the ground. So you want to make sure that he's not up, he's not leaning down when you do this, he's 
parallel because you don't want to accidentally have his neck like at a weird angle. And then when you go and fix the head, it's now like lopsided. Which is also why I tilt the nose because all the hair then gravity takes with it. I'm going to go ahead and do it on this side. Filming real well. Make sure he's facing forward, but tilt it and following my line yet again. Making sure I don't get my ear accidentally. Very important. A lot of times people will ask like, well, what's the rule for the width of the top knot? And I learned, I think from Sue's echo, <laughs> a million years ago to go off the cheek, to go off this cheek that that's how wide it should be out at like a 30 or 45 degree angle. I like a 30, like a steeper angle, um, just because I feel like, again, too wide makes them look like they have a mushroom head. And I am guilty of the mushroom head look, very guilty. So I've done my two sides. I'm going to do the same thing forward. And this is when I'll tilt the nose down. I'm combing all of these layers, making sure I get every hair. I'm combing from the skin out. You don't want to like half comb like clients do. You want to make sure that you get it all because when that'll pull all those sticky outies and make sure that all the hair is straight. And then I'm just cutting straight across at my thick line again and the nose is down, as far down as comfortable. You don't want to force the dog into an unnatural position. Again, like there are partners, they're not a tool for glory. You know, they're here and it's a lot that we're asking of them. Now you can see how much fuller his top knot looks with just me taking off that little bit of hair. I'm going to clean up this line a little bit more. because I can still see things. Cleaning up his eye. And then I'm going to comb everything back. And I'm just going to go where his occiput is, which is right here. And I'm going to take off any of those stray ends. But I'm not cutting into the neck and I'm not cutting into the depth of his head. Take it out again. Okay. So then when you go to set in your neck now, again, I said you want it tight on the sides. So with his nose parallel and I have my, his ear in my hand, I'm going to turn his head as far as it'll go to the other side and anything outside of my line that I already established, yet again, is coming off. I'm doing this with my curves. I'm going to flip them. And I'm just going to follow it along that natural line that I already made. This is part of that hourglass shape. I'm not going to go down into the shoulder. I'm just going to follow from behind the ear over the ribs. Clean that up a little bit. Do it again from this angle. Make sure that I have everything. Again, I'm looking at lines that I've established. I'm moving my head. I can't move my body. I know, buddy. Coming from the forward. Comb this up, take my blenders, and I'm just going to take off any of the sticky outies. Following that natural curve of the neck into the shoulder. So now when I'm looking from the front, I see the curve of my neck. 
I see my rib, I see my loin, I see my back angle, and I see my return of chest and my elbow. And that's all the things that you want to see from the front. We're going to fluff up the transition line. And I know that it want, I want it to be in line with my elbow. I'm going to take my curves. I'm going to lay the pivot point on his back top line. Tips angled up and away. And I'm going to windshield wiper this in. You want it to be a kind of a dramatic swoop. So this is the start of my dramatic swoop. Then I'm going to take his nose. It's straight and parallel. I'm going to turn it down to the table as comfortable as it will go. And then I'm going to pull his neck forward slightly so it's still arched. So you can still see that nice arch. Then I'm going to take my straights and this transition line that I've started. I'm going to follow it and cut anything out that doesn't connect in an S. I know it seems counterproductive to do this with straights, but that way your blades are even and they're not dipping in any which way. And it's very, very important to make sure that you maintain that arch in the neck because if you just pull the nose down, you're, going, you're not stretching the neck. So this is stretching the neck in a natural way. Just like when we tilt our heads down to give a nice little stretch into our traps, same thing. So parallel nose, dip it down, and then pull it forward. If you just try to do this with your neck, instead of putting your nose forward, you're just scrunching your neck straight down. This is keeping the vertebrae in line. It's more comfortable for the dog and it's the shape that you want. And anything that's sticking out of my line before my elbows. Scissoring off. Scissoring off nice and flat. Check my work. Okay, this still looks pretty stuffy in here. So I'm going to go ahead from the side and I'm going to follow it. And you can do this with straights with curves in reverse, like flipped in the witch away for motion or blenders, whatever is comfortable for you. You don't want the neck to look bulky. They're not bodybuilders, they're ballerinas. They're very elegant, very proud dogs. his legs under him. Looking better. And a lot of this when you do leave the bulk it makes you look like your rib cage is up here and it's not. It's down here. So we want to make sure that we're pulling all this in. And again, if it's staticky, always use your scissor spray. Walk around your dog as much as possible, checking all the possible angles. And 
these are my curves and flipped, but I'm just pulling my line down. And this is a great way when you flip your curves or if you have reverse curves, they do make them where they turn up instead of down. Um, they're great for places like this, not just opposite sides of heads. So it just kind of gives you that more beveled angle. <laughs> you want to take a nap, huh? Ty Ty. Again, just pulling off the bulk here, moving my rib cage down. Set them up. Take another look. All right. I just see a little hair right here. Look how much longer his neck looks. It's proud, it's elegant. Probably use a little bit more off back here in this transition. You can always check by pushing, running your hand up. So holding their nose where you want it, pushing here. I can see that this is what I want off now, right in here. So I just go ahead, revert down, nose forward, down, arch the neck. And judges will do that to you. That's, that's how they check that. So check yourself. Oh, that looks better. Oh yeah, nice, clean, matches with my elbow. Our ribs are where they should be, our shoulders nice and flat, but not taken in too much because it's not a terrier. And our head, when viewed from the front, has a little bit of an hourglass shape going. That's what we want. So then finally we come to the tail. Um, I like to take it not to the very tip of the tail, but just a little bit above it. Um, you don't want the tail higher than your occiput. And that's just a balance thing because it'll make your neck look shorter, um, unless it's a natural tail, obviously. A natural tail um, is not really a great way to do this, but he is a, a show doc. So I twist it all up, and this is why I leave a little extra at the top, because if I took it right at the tip, I would end up with a pine cone. So I go about a pinch, if I pinch it between my thumb and my forefinger, and then I cut it straight across. And he's got a lot of hair here. Let it go, and then I find that tip of my tail again, and I comb it all down. It does not need to be a perfect ball. It's great if it can be because it's a toy poodle, but if it's a mini or a standard, it just needs to be kind of oval shaped, just like your bracelet. So I combed everything down and I'm taking it so that my tail set is clear. Because like everything else in life, we don't want anything over our lines that we've made. I'm going to let it go. I'm going to shake it out. 
Now I've made a line here and I've made a line there, and I'm just going to take the edge off. And I can see the edge all the way around. And unfortunately, because this tail was so long, it's not going to be real poofy in the back. Gravity's had its way too long, but any place that your poodle hair is really soft or it's not staying where you want it when you comb it out and scissor it, scissor it a little bit each week. Um, like I, again, I said my other poodle, my toy has really soft coat and I have to scissor it. I have to scissor it every two weeks or it starts falling apart and his legs won't hold a shape and his tail won't hold a shape and unfortunately for me that's the one I chose to put in a Scandinavian so it's imperative but it will help the hair uh, learn where to stay and then also improve its texture because the more you work that coat the more blood flow you're getting. Just like if you massage your scalp every night you know your hair grows. If you have a tail that hangs over the back, um, that's known as a gay tail, his is not, but if you do, one that curls very close to the back, cut more off the front and leave it on the back. Same thing if you have a, a tail that's kind of like not where it should be and won't stand straight up, take more off the back and leave more on the front. I like to clean off my table. I know, buddy. I know, I know, I know. He does not like to be moved on the table. <laughs> He's very much a statue, which is a good thing. He's a very cooperative boy. He's pretty sure, though, every time the table moves that he's on double dare and he's going to get knocked off into the swarm. Um, in competition, I would put a little spray in his hair because, like I said, like, it's a little bit too long for the natural texture to hold it up. I'm not going to do that today because, you know, we're at home and we're not going anywhere special. The very end for the ears, I just take the vet wrap off. It rolls right off. And then I try to make sure that it's kind of even with the point of chest. If the ears are too short, it can make the look out of balance. If the ears are too long, it can make the neck look short. I just comb them down, find where I want it, which happens to be at the end of the vet wrap. It almost always works out that way. And then I just cut straight across. And then straight across this way. Um, what a lot of people struggle with ears in both the salon and in the competition ring. The easiest thing that I found to do is to find a spot on the body. So like the point of chest. And then that way I just cut the ear to there and the other ear to there and then it's even. And then I look at them from the, I comb them and I don't pick them up. After the initial shaping, I just don't. I comb them down, let them sit, and then I look this way, anything that's sticking out, and I look this way, anything that's sticking out. And that really just gets all those little stray hairs that drive everybody crazy and makes one ear end up being up here and the other one down here. So they're almost automatically even if you do it that way. And if they're not and you feel like you do need to blend or it looks really blunt, if you take all the ends between your two fingers, you can feather cut them. And what I mean by that is you take your straights 
Not thinners, not blenders, because that's still going to create blunt cuts. But this is what hairdressers do to the end of your hair. They take just the tip and they feather it in. And it's on a small angle, so you're basically cutting small triangles and taking off very, very, very little hair. You can see all just like the little tiny bits on my hand. But it just lays more naturally than if you try to do thinners or blenders or, you know, it, it, anything really that has two blades that are still the equal length. Because you're creating a natural layering in there. There we go. But it was a 13 year old, he had a mass on his back leg and it was, the artery was inside of the mass. Aww. As much as you can kind of thing. I guess it was going to be like take the whole leg, which at 13 isn't really fair. 